Hello. <gasps> I'm not drunk. Pavel, don't do that. Have I lost my mind? You're about to. Yes, that's right. That's acute anxiety disorder caused by a stressful situation. Sure, that'll help. Hold on, you know what's gonna happen? Drink that and you're out. That's right. Either you live or you die. There's a patient on the 8th floor. He's in a coma right now. What happened to her? I really don't know. But think about what she feels if you're sick like that. You're the only one who can help her. Go talk to her, Pavel. How? I said I don't know. But she's waiting. Sir, who are you? So I assume you're Dr. Pavel Andreev. I said, who are you? And why are you here? I'm Vladimir Melichenko. I'm the head of security service at Novamed. I've been here for a year with Miss Violeta and with her father for 12 years before that. Never had kids of my own. So Violetta is actually like a daughter to me. That means you must be aware of what happened to her. All I can tell you now is what the police report says. She fell from the second floor. So I figured I had trauma, but it turns out... No improvements yet. All we can do is wait. She's in induced coma right now. I'm really sorry for barging in like that. You've mentioned Novomed? All the equipments you have on the 8th floor, and the surgery clinic. Well, Violetta signed the contract already. You don't know who you're treating? That doesn't concern you at all. Now please leave. Alright, I'm leaving. So you don't know who her father was, do you? Does the surname Aristov not ring a bell to you? Aristov? And? She's their family's heiress. And now, fights among the family members will begin. Who will inherit their fortune when she dies? I think it's too early to talk about her death. Has her stepmother been here? You know, that's none of my business, sir. All the best. Go talk to her, Pavel.
Hello. What if I really am losing my mind? Well, that's kind of funny. Hey, I'm here! What? Did you say something? I'm here in front of you, can't you hear me? Did you just talk to me now? This isn't funny at all. I'm afraid the doctor has lost his mind. Hey! Hey, I'm here! Hello? This is just sad. You still can't hear anything. Please say something, I can't hear you! Or can you? Hey! I'm here! I'm here, mister! Can't you see me? I want to be a plant like you. Or just a cloud. Or maybe a tree. Don't leave me here. Please don't go. I might die here and no one will know. As a result, the actions of the accused have resulted in the deaths of two people, including a young child. Mitigating circumstances were considered. Mr. Viktor Voronov admits his guilt and expresses remorse and regret, which is considered mitigating circumstances under federal law. The court proceedings had concluded on September 8, 2021, and after giving all the evidence and witness testimony due to consideration, and now the fifth court came to the conclusion that Mr. Viktor Voronov should be sentenced to six expect? years of incarceration be punished here? in a prison with general security. Well, you're wrong. Furthermore, the Supreme Court you can of see Justice he's a decided to and revoke the driver's license of Mr. Voronov. Yes, he may be driving too fast, the period. but I really in don't think that he meant to hurt Mr. anyone. Mr. Voronov is obligated to remit a sum of one million. He was just being a total to idiot. That's it. The entirety it. of the damages incurred. <laughs> It's As a case a of wrong of time and place. Subsequent legal proceedings, failure to comply with the provisions of this order shall be subject to judicial sanction. No matter how Mr. it sounds. Mr. Varunov possesses the legal entitlement to exercise his right to file an appeal with a constitutional court, should he choose to do so with the purpose of initiating a review of the case. The parties waive all arguments in the trial court or on appeal that require or depend on the existence. Yes, hello. Hello, it's me. The princess needs to sleep for another two or three days. That's an order, you got that? Are you crazy? Just do it. I'm sorry, but I can't. And why can't you, huh? Because it's dangerous. Now that makes it even better, understand?
Paperwork's ready? Yes, you may go there. Thank you. Are they here? Yep, everyone's here. Anyone from the management? Only a few. Do you think they know? No, no, I don't think so. They just think she's sick. Almost, but not quite. I'm not in the mood for jokes right now. Our dear friends and colleagues, I know you all love and respect Miss Violetta, but unfortunately something really tragic happened. Yes, this is a very difficult time for us, but we can't afford to waste any time. That's why we've come up with this difficult decision. From now on, I'll be in charge until further notice. What about today's presentation? It's going ahead as planned. Any more questions? No more? All right, thank you. So you'll be the one to sign it? Yes, leave it. Pavel, I was waiting for you. What's the court verdict? He was sentenced to six years. For reckless driving? Sleeping while driving. I've noticed that. You don't go home. You want to live here? Honestly, I would feel better if you moved in with us. No, thank you. But where? Tell me, where are you going this time for heaven's sake? And more importantly, for what? Do you want to switch hospitals? No, I don't want to go back. I just want to leave. What do you mean? You're a doctor. Not anymore. I'm done being one. But he won't be able to walk away. Is that what you think? Oh no. It so happened that you're my family, no matter what. <sighs> but it's different now. It was so strange to hear Pavel talk in that way and use those words. What can we do about it, Irina? Well, I don't know. If I offer him therapy, he won't understand me for sure. He needs some time. Like maybe... a nice long vacation, or maybe some... some extra work. No, I don't think so. When it all happened to Sergei, I also thought work would help him recover. I didn't help him. Anyway, we still need to keep a close eye on him. He's still our friend Pavel, after all. I know that, Anna. He is still our Pavel. He showed up in town with his girl, was going to propose to her, and then... eventually passed out while holding the ring. A tumor that big is expected. Yeah. It was already removed once at a different hospital three months ago. It's too bad it came back. Histology has detected schwannoma, and since it was benign, they just all ignore it. Hmm. They didn't, but... What about us? What about resection in such deep tissues? Well, yeah. It's unsafe. If you're not yet ready, just let me know. As the head of the department, I really have to know all your thoughts and doubts. And opinions on this case. 
Andreev used to perform such operations. He used to, but not anymore. So are you ready now? Are you trying to force me? Why, do you want to refuse? Do you want to tell the patient to leave? That would be the best thing. <sighs> okay. Listen, we might still have a chance if we're going to use the retrosigmoid axis. So what now? I'll talk to Andreeva. Dr. Andreev, can I talk to you? Yes, come in, please. I just want to get some advice. A uh, vestibular schwannoma with a predominant extension to the cerebellopontin side, with compression of the brainstem. I see. It's a bad location. Yes, that's why I need your advice. You performed similar surgeries in the deep tissue many times. I'd send him to a neurologist. Let him take some pills. Wait a minute. But there were successful surgeries. Listen here, Evgeny. I gave you my opinion. Unjustified risk? Only life is justified. There's no way to justify death. Thank you. Dr. Yegorov? Are you our doctor? I'm Victor's partner. I'm the bride. Uh, yeah. Well, we look at the x-rays. Unfortunately, it's a tumor again, and it's too risky to remove it. But can you please try? You don't understand how dangerous the surgery would be. We'd already had surgery, and we'd been warned about the risks. But they were too scared, and they didn't want to mess up their stats. Please, he's dying. There are less risky methods out there that we can try. We've already discussed every possible scenario. The fact that we ended up in St. Petersburg and that it happened here, I guess it's fate. I beg of you. All right. Hold on. You name your price. It's not about the money. No, with money, you can do anything. Just name your price and I will try to earn it by becoming a prostitute Will you please and... calm down for a second? I love him. I don't have anyone else but him. I'm as everything. I already went to the ER as you asked, and I warned them just in case. Thank you. Check the navigation system, twice. I'm praying. God help us. Spatula and coagulator. All right, now slowly and carefully. The vitals are normal, reactions are good. Which is why it's strange. Everything feels way too easy. I really don't understand why it wasn't removed earlier. His girlfriend said they didn't want to mess up the stats. So they didn't go all the way. Why are you surprised? They removed the tumor, masked the symptoms, and got rid of it. That's it. All good now. And the fact that the tumor's back is just fine, huh? It's a new tumor. Records state that the old one was removed. Pavel advised me not to get involved in this that I should send him to a neurologist and give him peace. Pavel said that to you? Death is not justifiable. Only life is justified. Unjustified risk. Pavel is human too. And patients are sometimes victims of statistics or bad doctors. Come in. 
Hey, Dr. Andrea, I specifically asked you to come by so that there would be no misunderstandings later on. What's the matter? You operated a patient named Miss Aristova, and you decided to place her into drug-induced sleep. Yes, two days ago, due to her vitals. Yes, and that's to help her nervous tissue heal. We tried to wake her up, but unfortunately, she went into a coma. Without my consent, why am I only informed now? Because you were absent today. We were forced to act on our own accord. What exactly did you do? Just the usual. Now I'm in charge of this patient. Let's go. Based on my experience, this is a pretty serious matter, so please make sure to consult with me before making any decisions, okay? You better be careful. Oh, and one more thing. Miss Violetta is married to a very important person. A legit VIP. And he's really worried about her. For him, it's a personal tragedy, so I'm reminding you now to please be gentle. Oh, finally. Any updates? Well, right now, we can't get your wife out of the induced sleep. You're telling me you could get her induced, but you can't get her out? I was told the surgery went well. It did. <clears throat> yes, but it, uh... But what? Why do you doctors always have a but? I don't give a damn about your rules. My sister is here. Oh, please, meet my... Oh, I gosh. keep forgetting the word. Sister-in-law, your wife's sister. I'm her sister. Yes, her sister, Natalia. This is Violeta's doctor and surgeon, Pavel. Hello, doctor. It's a pleasure. My dear, how are you now? Violetta, you okay? The patient's vitals are stable. She's in a coma. And they don't know why, though. In a coma? Is she dying? No, no, she's not dying. This is actually what we called an induced coma, which let's means that... Let's just cut to the chase. What's wrong with my sister? Well, well, let's just say that she might be unconscious for quite a while. Like, a really long time. A long time. time, but how long? To be honest, we can't tell exactly when she'll wake up. Hey, I wasn't talking to you. No, no, it's okay, because he's your doctor in charge now, and he, as the anesthesiologist, will answer all your questions. All the best. Right. We're ready to take out the cyst. And done. Pressure's rising. It's reacting to stress. I'll keep going. It's merely a hormonal response to the procedure. Igor, I'm very happy that you are a good student. But I'll rather be safe than sorry. Let's stop the procedure. Anna, I need to take the risk. Igor, get to it. Death is never justified. I'm finishing up. Yes. In this kind of field, he who takes risk will reap rewards. Are you sure it's a good idea to go to the office now? Oh yeah, so no one would think that without Violetta the business will suffer. If you like, I can swing by later. I'll just drive mom. No, there's no need to come. And the press release? Please get it ready for tomorrow, but remember, don't ever mention about the coma. I know, you don't need to tell me that. Gosh, I'm so worried about Violetta. There's no need to worry. Everything will be fine. And I'm sure of that. I'll do everything for her. You know how I love her. <sighs> yes. Just be strong. Well, I'll go now. Could you not drink when visiting the hospital? It won't harm Violetta. She's in a coma. I'm just worried and stressed out. And besides, I just had a glass of wine. Just one? Remember, we want to make a good impression. Okay, it's two. Come on, let's drop it now, okay? What impression has Violetta made on whom? Now that she is like this, huh? Mom, it's the perfect time for us to be a good family right now. Otherwise, we're nothing to him. Are we in a hurry? What if I tell you... I'm losing my mind? I wouldn't be surprised. What are the symptoms? 
I have a patient who's in a coma. There are absolutely no stimulants. Yet I still have the feeling that... that she can hear me. Like she hears and even looks at me. Did you do an encephalogram? Yes, I think so. Gennady's in charge. Gennady? Uh-huh. Then perform another encephalogram. I'll tell you what, Pavel. There's something called the locked person syndrome. When someone's in a coma, their conscience must be automatically pushed down. But please take note of this. They can still hear everything. And sometimes, there are instances wherein they can see what's going on around them. Okay, here's what you can do. Try to feel for gamma activity at 40 hertz. But keep in mind that if you want to see any changes in the activity, you'll need to change the stimuli. Try to use pain by hurting her, or you can try another approach by making her laugh, or even telling her a joke, it's up to you. You can also try to scare her. If there's a change in her feelings, the device will let you know. But there's something else, that's just the beginning. You then have to figure out why her conscience shut down and get rid of the cause. Just imagine that your father's only been gone a year, and everything has gone downhill since then. Mom, let's not talk about that. And why not? Yes, it's your father. But what did he do for you? Nothing. He's also your husband. Oh, Natalia, stop blaming me for everything. I'm 100% sure that he didn't leave it all to Violetta for no reason. He was drugged, or maybe even forged his will. Mom, why are you talking nonsense again? Nonsense. <sighs> if Yuri were alive right now, I am telling you he wouldn't have to grumble before this jerk. That was just love. How disgusting. You just can't keep your mouth shut, can you? Oh, so now Vyacheslav is a good guy. It's definitely not his fault that Dad loves us with nothing. And who's to blame? Violetta? For God's sake, she's your sister and looked after her all her life. It's pretty much normal for businessmen to change their wills a million times. But none of them leave out their youngest child in their wills. Or their wife, who they lived with for nearly 20 years. If he did, there must be a foul play, and who will gain? Vyacheslav Korchin. Mom, please calm down. It was Dad's decision. God will judge him. Why did you visit Pavel? You want to know? To be honest, I wanted to convince him to perform the surgery. But you didn't? No. Do you know that he lives in the ward right there on the 8th floor? Hi, baby. Is everything all right? Yeah. Of course, Dee well, I gave you my word, so yes. Okay, bye. I'm at work now. Are you going to the park's grand opening? Yes. I promised my daughter. <sighs> she waited for this for two months. So did I. Can I come with you? Why so sudden? Someone was just talking about rewards. But at work, we are always like this. I haven't agreed yet. Thank you anyway. At 7 p.m. by the entrance, I'll be waiting for you.
You know what? I don't understand. Your surgery was perfect as far as I can tell. So why do you need a resuscitation team even for the whole night? Because I still have some doubts. Tell me about it. Well, I went to Pavel before the operation. And what did he say? So you told him that the risks were too high? Yes, in my opinion. He still performed the surgery, and everything went well. You want me to congratulate him? No. I just want you to explain why did you discourage him. Well, I've assessed the risks. I've been weighing the chances of getting a high success rate versus the chances of getting a failure rate. And unfortunately, he thinks it would fail. I've already had enough of failures. I think I'm done. I save people's lives, but not anymore. Pavel... Do I need to bring all the people you've saved for you to realize you're great? There's so many. Maybe even hundreds. Anna... Can you also bring those people that I didn't save? No, not everyone. Just only two. All right, fine, I'm done. What are you up to? A strange cocktail is being prepared for the patients on the eighth floor here. What's this? It's blood. I know, but whose blood is it? You know who's in the VIP on the 8th? The girl who's in a coma? You operated on her. Right after the surgery, I personally insisted that she be induced into a coma for at least two days. Today, they tried to get it out without me, but they couldn't. Whose daughter is she? You don't know? Aristov. Owner of Nova Med. No, no, he's just a former owner. He's already dead. Right, I read about that. So I'm trying to figure out what is what. And her husband works there too. What would you say if I told you that someone is as skilled as neurosurgeon, for example, could reach a brain tumor with the help of a 3D visualization in virtual reality? This will be as easy as a child reaching into his toy box at home and taking out any piece he wants. <clears throat> you see, our most recent technology is something unusual for Impressive. those people who are not so into... So now they just drop it all? Oh, well. It's a horrible story. And it happened so fast. A man died in a hospital and his daughter is in a coma. You know, I wouldn't want to be in their situation. And you won't be for sure, Miss Eleonora. I can assure you that. Are you sure about that? If anything happens to me, why am I telling you this? You already know. Knock on wood. <laughs> So you really want me to sign this now, huh? Do you know the reason why I won't truly end up in one of our hospital beds just yet? Because I get treated overseas. <laughs> <laughs> and the treatment there is very expensive. But remember, you grabbed a very large piece of the pie. Now all the orders will go to Novamed and Paknovsky. He was expecting to get 50%. Don't you worry that he might get back at you? Did he ask you to tell me that? 
Are you crazy? I don't get involved with your business. I'm just a low profile. I can't influence <laughs> anything. He's there in the door. All the best, Miss Eleonora. Get your guys working. I need info on Bakovsky. Related to crime? Where should you start? Get his account info, contacts in the ministry. We can use our connections. No need, because we're on another level. If you have a close friend who's a general or a colonel, then we can... Let's ask Melichenko's help. He has connections. He doesn't know anything, not even a single thing. How long he's been working there? 20 years? That's a lot. The old man needs to retire. Hello there. Thank you for agreeing to meet me. Oh, you were highly recommended by them. And also, I believe you served with us. Yeah, in a different agency. I just want to ask. Do you know a surgeon whose last name is Andreev? He's a neurosurgeon. Yes, I saw him earlier today. May I know why? A man was on trial because he killed his wife and child in a car crash. Why? What's with Bavel? The thing is, one of my close friends is under his knife. Now she is in a coma. But he's a great doctor. He is. But she's in a coma. Is it an accident? I'm not sure. Well, I think... the doctor might have been influenced. So I'm asking you to tell me everything you know about him. Oops. Hold on tight, baby. Anna, grab a seat too. Stop trying to convince me. I won't ride on this. Mom, please sit down. Oh, no. I think someone is scared of carousels. My mom is scared. My mom is scared. She's scared of the carousel. No, I'm not scared. Right. This horse won't buckle under me. My mom, mom is scared. scared. My, My mom, mom is scared. scared. Who says I'm scared, huh? <laughs> 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 Woo. Woo <-hoo. laughs> Look at me! <laughs> <laughs> Alemtina, hold on tight, okay? <laughs> hold on tight. <laughs> I really can't believe that Evgeny is kind of romantic and charming. Will he succeed, though? Not today. But trying to win over her daughter? That's a smart move. You said he's charming. I don't think he'll have any luck, as long as Pavel is around. And why do you say that? Tell me, whose child do you think that is? Oh, now you're just having silly thoughts. <sighs> well, it's not my thoughts. I'm passionate by nature. Mm-hmm. So focus on your own life, then. You see, my life now is very clear. Yeah? Really? So what's so clear about it? That's because I'm on a date with one of the higher-ups in neurosurgeries. And I can see that... he's clearly in love with me. Is that so, huh? It's written all over his face. Hurry up, I don't have much time. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to keep her alive. What's the issue? It's like taking a drug. It obviously causes an addiction. On one hand, it shuts off her conscience, but on the other, 
It makes some things impossible to change. So you're trying to tell me that she can potentially lose her mind? That's not the issue. If I increase the dosage, it could cause her death. Don't increase it, reduce it. Then she will wake up. She can't. That's exactly my point right now. I have a big deal on the line. So I want her to remain here. Do you understand? How much time do you still need? I don't know. For now, as much time as possible. Please, I want to be alone with my wife. Too bad. Too bad you didn't believe me. Too bad you got in the way with your questions and paperwork. We worked well together, didn't we? Hmm? You have no idea how fortunate I am to have the odds in my favor. All because of this. Sweet dreams. If only I knew you can hear me. There must be a way to communicate with you. I just need to think about motion. Come on, Pavel, think. All right, listen up. I hooked you up to a device that will allow me to see even the smallest changes in your brain chemistry. All right, miss, I know you can hear me. At least some part of your brain hears me right now. I want to communicate with you. Listen closely. When I ask you a question, and your answer will be yes, you need to run, run as fast as you can. 
in your imagination, just run. If your answer is no, then you can just wave your hands, for example. All right, I got it. I'll do what you say. Any movement you make or even just imagine making will make a certain part of your brain work. I'll see it too. Okay, let's begin. Is your name Larissa? Hey, hey, are you really that stupid? Right, it looks like you said no, good. Are you a man? Of course not! Do you think I have male genitals? It's a big no, you jerk! Okay, your answer is no. You got it now? Is your name Violetta? Yes, 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 yes! Perfect. I see you answered yes. Let's continue. I need to know which communication channels works for you. Tell me, can you see the light? Awesome. How about me? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you, but not like normal, okay? It's hard for me to explain. No! I can, but in my own way. You don't see me. Now, please tell me, do you know why you're here? How did you end up here? I don't know. Let me tell you. You were rushed in here. You fell out of the window of your own house from the second floor. Your head was smashed. I operated on you, but after the surgery, you didn't wake up. You're in a coma. Violetta, did you understand what I just said, yes or no? You did. And now I'm going to ask you a strange question. Is there anyone who... who would benefit from you staying this way? Like you being in a coma? I will help you.